Today I'm out in the shop replacing the transmission cooler lines on my 2005 F-150 Lariat with an automatic transmission. Now this applies to any 2004 through 2008 F-150 with an automatic transmission. The parts required are the cooler lines for the transmission to the radiator and then the cooler and then from the radiator to the cooler. I'll put a link to the parts and the tools in the video description. Tools required are a special transmission cooler scissors or quick disconnect scissors. It's not the same as what Ford uses for their um, air conditioning quick disconnects or their fuel disconnects. It's slightly different and I'll put a link in the video description to that particular um, uh, quick disconnect tool and then some brushes a 10 millimeter socket extension and quarter inch ratchet that's to remove the air inlet horn with a 10 millimeter head size bolt uh, some kind of a drip pan a light and then PB blaster I also purchased this line tool from Amazon but didn't receive it when I did the introduction for this video this is an Aschenmacher 8021 3 8 line tool really nice tool I like the feature of having a rubber band on it I'll show it in use later in the video and a PB blaster helps lubricate those quick disconnects and cleans them out you also need a line wrench a 5 8 line wrench or an open end wrench I prefer to use a line wrench uh, especially on these enclosed uh, lines like you see on this like you see on the transmission end of these cooler lines they have a flare nut fitting you definitely want to use a line wrench there and these nuts are 5 8 these uh, quick disconnects are great when you're assembling the truck in the factory they simply just push in so it's very quick but after 218,000 miles on a truck and all the dirt and corrosion that gets into that uh, conical spring and o-ring I don't anticipate them coming out of the radiator uh, very well or out of the transmission fluid cooler I'm gonna get started on the truck by putting a copious amounts of PB blaster on each of these fittings the night before and uh, letting them soak. Hopefully that will penetrate and help me get these uh, quick disconnects apart. The 3 8 end is the end that we're going to use on uh, this particular project. only it's under ten dollars from Amazon to remove the air inlet horn it's just one 10 millimeter head size bolt and then lift the horn up and out of the air filter housing and then pull it to the left to pull it out of the fender well here so you can see there's a protective cover on both the bottom and the top you can see my uh, plow wires kind of interfering here. So I've turned this one around. Normally they're upside down. And then you can see the quick disconnects here. Back behind it. Top isn't too bad. The bottom is pretty corroded. Pretty dirty.
if this were new, it'd be a five minute job with those quick releases and that tool, you just push in. But with these being dirty and that conical spring, it probably is not a five minute job. And then there's a quick release on each of the oil cooler lines, the inlet here, and then the outlet over here on the right. So really four quick disconnects and then the two five sixteenths nuts should come right out. And then one uh, hold down that's over near the engine mount on the right side of the engine. Yeah, I'm not sure what uh, purpose these covers really provide other than being a protective cover and they don't seem to do much good at keeping them clean. You can see the rust and crap build up in this one and that's the top one. So I'm going to spray some more PB Blaster on this one and uh, try to clean it up just a little bit with a wire brush bottom one seems to be holding in dirt instead of uh, instead of keeping out dirt yeah see all the dirt this one's holding in here and here and that's after I sprayed it with the PB blaster now this is the tool wrapped around the tube and then pushed all the way in <clears throat> it took quite a bit of force to get it to go in. And you, see, you can see the, the smaller part of the nipple of the tool is all the way inserted into that joint. And it took quite a bit of pressure to get it in. And this is the upper one. This is the clean one. So I can't wait to get to the, the bottom one. Now the line should just pull on out. Again, easier said than done. On the cooler end of the lines, they had a little protective plastic cover. And this one came down when I was wire brushing it. So uh, then the other one just came down with a fingernail. Get those out of the way so mine just a minute ago mine still has that cooler line attached to it so i'm going to cut that off so i can get a socket on it so that line is already leaking so the two lines the two offending lines the the top one here the transmission line and then the cooler line down below they're leaking just underneath the fan shroud here where they come together that's where they're exposed to the environment so they're corroded there where they come together and there's a hold hold down there that's not actually attached to anything it just connects the two lines together so i'm replacing the two lines anyway but you can see that it's leaking there now that i've played with it but i can't get the line disconnected from that connector so i'm going to go ahead and replace it I'm just using a sawzall blade, multi-purpose uh, metal sawzall blade and a vice grip to cut it off. So I got to be careful I don't hit that lower radiator hose. And I can time lapse this for you. So there's what's left of the, the line and the clamp that held the two together. It's supposed to prevent a little bit of vibration. The stock OEM are a 27 millimeter. This 
so that's interesting. Just bumped my camera, so I don't know if I got the same camera angle, but that broke pretty easy. <coughs> But it should have, if it's got an O-ring in it. Hopefully the threads are pretty clean. hoping to be able to turn that with my fingers, but it's a little tighter than I could turn with my fingers. Let's see about now. Still a little tight. There it comes. screws nice with your fingers there. hopefully those threads are nice and clean so that's what the Ford looks like o-ring here you know little thread sealer on the threads pretty dirty old mess pretty dirty location see where I tried to clean it up with a wire brush and it's gotten hydraulic fluid back on it it's leaking here somewhere maybe there pinhole there or something see that anyway okay so here's what I did I took it out and soaked it in solvent for a while and then uh, got the tube to spin Got it to turn and uh, freed it up a little bit, continued to soak it in solvent, and then uh, used a small regular screwdriver and tried to clean around it. That didn't do much good because the outside here was already fairly clean from trying to clean it in the vehicle. But you can see the, the locking spring here, and then it's got like a nylon in here. And then after that, you probably can't see it with the light here, but it's got an o-ring then down lower and then uh then the, where the tube can just go in and sit inside it so once i got it freed up continue to soak it in solvent and then use pb blaster on it i wiggled it in the bore trying to free up this locking ring and uh, i don't believe i hurt the o-ring inside but it's not in great shape it's hard to see but you can see the o-ring on the outside is uh almost non-existent or doesn't uh look like it's gonna provide a lot of sealing so expecting the threads to seal so it has some thread sealer or something on it here and that wasn't didn't clean it off from the solvent so a little bit of sealer here and here hopefully that'll seal and then if the o-ring inside doesn't seal i'll have to replace it so i did find this online it's a motorcraft part and I'll put a link to it in the video description but it's uh, uh, about 30 bucks and it's gonna take about a week and a half to get to me from from the Amazon website and I don't think that the Ford dealer stocks these they're such a low volume so uh, if I if it does leak I'll have to do something more but I'm gonna put it back in the vehicle with some uh, with some sealant on it and hopefully it won't leak. Okay, so I'm just gonna partially install it from underneath the truck to make sure it's routed the right way. And I'm gonna set the 
end of it up in the quick disconnect and then I'm going to go back up on top and put it in. I really like this little quick disconnect tool. Once you get it fully inserted, just simply pull on the line and it'll pop out. I also like the little notch on the working end of this tool. You simply push it on over the line and it springs around the line. trying to show you a view of the flare nuts connected to the side of the transmission so you have the heat shield and the catalytic converter right here so it's it's hard to get a good view of them and you got to get your hand up in there from the back and uh to to turn them you can see how corroded my lines are here next to the transmission where they're exposed to the salt spray Yeah, bear with me the next few minutes. Now, if I were doing this for the first time, I would want to know that this complete assembly, this complete transmission cooler line assembly that you're looking here at the left and the, the top of this screen, that that will fit underneath the engine and in the truck in one complete assembly. It's one thing to take the old line out in pieces. That's quite easy. But to put the new line in as a complete assembly is a little difficult but doable. My recommendation is take the old line out in as big of a piece as you can to give you practice. It'll show you the path of how to put the new assembly in. Okay, at this point, I still have to go a little bit further forward. This flat needs to be up here for that mount that's right here that goes on the front of the engine near the harmonic balancer but what I've done is just stayed underneath the engine and worked everything through and you can tell I put a towel and tape around everything 
I know it's just an F-150, but I don't like scratching everything up. I don't like scratching the, the new lines up. So um, that keeps them when they're dragging on the ground and dragging against that cross member right here. The transmission cross member is where the, the back part of the lines had to be pulled along after they came off the ground. And you know, you have to work underneath the engine oil pan and the engine cross member here. And then across the rack, the steering gear, rack and pinion, underneath the oil pan. And then over the cross member here and the lines. The only thing, only word of caution is as you're bringing that front part of the hoses through, the back part comes up here into the starter area. And once you're in here in the starter area, um, you gotta be careful the lines will get all the way up and get up into the positive cable. But, you know, you get this long tube across first and as it comes across and underneath the engine this long tube needs to go up put it start pushing it up and once it gets through then uh it just seems like it gets freed up and they can go up and then you got to get the the rest of the line pulled underneath the engine i don't know i don't know it's hard to see Hard to explain, but it's doable all in one piece. The long line needs to go behind that short cooler line, the line that goes from the bottom of the radiator to the cooler. The line, the big line that comes from the back from the transmission has to go to the top of the radiator. It needs to be behind that line. And you can see right here is where that clamp was or that mounting location was that wasn't attached to the frame or anything so this still needs to go up a little bit it's not attached at the top so that'll be connected right there and right now i'm gonna go back and and get my lines connected to the transmission and once i've done that they'll be all the way forward and then i can put the clamp back in here you can see that some more light get the clamp in here yep, I'm in my I'm in the way right there in the front of the engine here there's the clamp right there so there we go I've got the two lines connected back at the transmission those two flare nuts and I reconnected the wiring harness that uh, has a little connector that uh, uh, mounts two little two lines to go into the oil pan from the sending unit that goes in the oil pan. So you got to put the two lines back on the connector here and then uh, connect the two lines in the front. So let's do that. Put that back on. You can see the masking tape that I used to keep my lines from getting so beat up. How beat up the masking tape is. So I'm going to take that back off. And then uh, then we'll connect the two lines and we're done. Top it off with uh, transmission fluid. So here we go. The cap off the return line. And the cap off the new transmission cooler and push the tube up into the cooler let's see oh the sweet sound of that click feels like it's positively locked into there that's good and we can let it turn here as it wants to. So yeah, there we go. Pretty good. Um, go 
connect the line up on the top. Okay, two hands would have been nice. Okay, there we go. Position it. Feels like it's positively locked in there. That's a good sign. If it's in there good and tight, good and snug, that one feels pretty good. Goes on the groove of the nut. And then over the tube. Just like that. There we go. And that's it. We just need to top it off with transmission fluid now and then run the truck to make sure we don't have any leaks. Right, check for leaks. So that concludes the video. If you found it helpful, let me know in the comments and uh, please subscribe. I look forward to your comments.